we uh, uh, Thin was talking about uh, question number three how to improve your academic English and uh, how do you how do you respond to this question mm, well uh, maybe you read books and you you go and revise from the dictionary and mm -hmm. or maybe you read newspapers or listen to news on the television mm -hmm. or watch movies maybe watching movies can help you to improve your academic English do you think so <clears throat> it can improve overall English like uh, the pronunciation and <clears throat> yeah but here we are talking about academic English yeah uh, of course it depends on uh, the genre of movie uh, that you are watching some special movies could help you to improve your uh, academic English for example some documentaries from yeah. BBC from Discovery Channel actually uh, some those documentaries can help you definitely to improve your academic English but not generally uh, watching movies. They can help you to improve your listening ability and somehow brush up some new words if you have access to the subtitles, but not necessarily academic English. Okay, so far so good, hold on. All right, question number four, let me see. Uh, how can you improve your fluency in English? Thin, back to you. Um, so I think when it comes when it comes to fluency in English, um, I think I can divide it to like two categories, and that is um, speaking and like writing the vocabulary as a whole. So if you want to improve your speaking fluency in English, the only way is to speak as much as possible, um, and especially with natives. Okay, so... That was a very good uh, hint. And what about you, Hadi? What is your answer to this, to the same question? Uh, to improve your fluency in English? Well, yes, fluency. Uh, the, uh, just focus on verbal skills, not writing or written skills. Uh, well, in general, I think that uh, you can improve your fluency just by talking to each other, talking to the, especially a native person who knows the language very well. So mm -hmm. he should be able to correct, he or she should be able to correct, correct you uh, if you're pronouncing a word differently, uh, wrong, so he mm -hmm. can correct you. So I think, yeah, that's the thing to learn from the native person. Okay, good. And what about uh, the counterpart that is accuracy? You know, accuracy refers to uh, using the language grammatically. And fluency refers to using the language smoothly, particularly uh, in verbal communication and uh, when you interact with others verbally. So which one do you think in today's world uh, is more important, fluency or accuracy? Uh, I think it's important to be fluent because mm -hmm. if you, yeah... Grammar is something else, but uh, if you're fluent, then the other person can understand you easily. Or... Mm -hmm. Because uh, mostly people uh, don't, mostly native people, they also don't know the perfect grammar, but they, they are so fluent that it sounds like they it, they are uh, perfect. Gram grammatically, gram grammatically correct. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I also agree with you. And what about you, Thin? Fluency and accuracy, which one comes first? Um, I think it's accuracy. I'm not really sure. Um, I think it's my idea. Uh, because at least in my countries, we tend to write English on papers, and accuracy is always on demand. Um, fluency is also very necessary, but um, we don't tend to care about fluency. No. Like we don't take um you know we, we don't lay much emphasis on fluency, especially when we do writing tests. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. So let me see. Question number five: Why is it important to immerse yourself in English? And uh, first of all, you should know 
what is meant by immersing yourself in English. Do you know what is meant by this uh, idea, Hadi? Uh, no, I don't really know the meaning of immerse, uh, but I think it's something uh, something that is very huge or um, or that is immense with an N. Immerse. Oh, yeah, that's him. Immerse is. Are you on the page? Because actually, you could see the flashcard that is linked to that if you just place the cursor of your mouse on the, yeah, on the yeah. word immerse. Yeah, I just saw. Yeah, it's immerse. Mm -hmm. So, immerse means to cover something with something else. And when you immerse yourself in English, it means that you are exposed to English as much as possible. Okay. So, for example, diary writing. For example, you you are married and uh, you talk to your spouse and you speak to uh, him or her in English. You know, instead of using your native language. Yeah, I, immersing yourself. I think I think it's very important to immerse yourself because uh, that's why you are you you will get better in learning English overall. Because if you surround yourself in the environment, so it is uh, very easy for to grasp and learn uh, the language. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, okay, thing, it is self-explanatory that immersing yourself in English is actually inevitable. But the question is, how can you immerse yourself in English? Uh, just give us some techniques, some solutions or keys to immersing yourself in English. My turn, right? right? Yes, yes. Right. Um, so I think there are quite a few ways um, I can think of. Um, the first way is to keep talking yourself to English. I know it does sound mm -hmm. weird, but I think, I think this is a very effective technique because when you discuss problems, even when you are unknown, even when you are only yourself, um, you can always keep engaged with the language non-stop. So this would like never break the connection and you will feel a lot more immersed as if you are actually living in an English speaking mm -hmm. country despite the fact that you are not. Another way to immerse yourself in English is to live in a native uh, like a native um, environment or just, you know, like me and a native, like a full, yeah. Um, because living with full foreigners uh, in English speaking countries is the best way because, you know, they talking and you listen to them. And so you can get a lot of ideas about what they say. And also mm -hmm. to immerse yourself in English is to also have a lot of activities about English, you listen to English music, you read English books, you read English documents, and you write English, and that's the best way to immerse yourself. That's, um, those okay. are among the best ones. Okay, thank you. And also thanks to uh, the availability of the internet and, and state-of-the-art technology these days, you don't need to necessarily live in a, uh, uh, let's say, English-speaking country in order to be able to learn that perfectly. For example, uh, right now we are using the internet and distance learning on LLB Society to just uh, actually practice English in, the, uh, in one of the best ways ever. So... Uh, as you can see, this way we can immerse ourselves in English to some extent. Bye. So question number six. Discuss the advantages of diary writing in English. So, Hadi, back to you. Uh, how can you uh, maximize or get the most out of diary writing or journal writing in English, uh, which is one of the methods for immersing yourself in English? Uh... Well, I think uh, if you're writing something in a diary, uh, it will be better for learning. And you can know, for example, if, if I learn, learn a word which I don't knew before, so I can write it down and I, I can write its meaning. So it will be in my memory that I have learned this word and it means this. So I can use it in my future uh, discussions or conversation. 
Okay, yeah. As a matter of fact, diary writing, as you said, is one of the uh, most effective methods in order to just practice writing because even some native speakers, to be honest, have uh, problems r- in writing and writing is a very uh, high, highly developed uh, skill. So uh, the other term, actually, as I said, is uh, journal writing, diary writing, and uh, somehow creating a portfolio of your progress in English. Okay, so what's your idea about that uh, thing? Um, I think I also have some similar ideas. So um, to me, um, there are a lot of adventures when it comes to diary writing, especially in English. Um, like when you when you write in English, you can also not only enforce the way to write the correct, you know, uh, when it comes to grammar and vocabulary and especially collocations because, you know, you must write fluently. Um, but another thing is that when you write diaries and words like that, I think you feel a lot more connect uh, to yourself and by that way, you can find pleasure in actual writing diaries in English. So this is a form. This is a very good method of keeping yourself engaged in interest in English. Okay, question number seven. What are the major differences between writing in English and speaking English? So, uh, how do you, how do you respond to this yeah. question? Uh, well, I think that. Uh, writing is more advanced uh, mm-hmm. because because you can express yourself and uh, it can be uh, uh, for example if if I'm writing a letter to someone so uh, I can arrange my uh, words and everything uh, whereas in speaking uh, I have to change choose my words very carefully I cannot uh, 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 miss misinterpret or Speaking is, uh, you can be uh, fluent in speaking, but in uh, writing, you have, to, it can be complex. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, writing is more complex and also advanced, as you said, and it requires organization. You need to just think more about what you're going to just write, but speaking could be more or less uh, impromptu or extempore it means uh, you need to improvise it but when it comes to writing it is a more uh, organized activity yeah and it uh, in writing uh, they should also be considered that uh, it is uh, you're writing uh, grammatically correct but uh, in speaking however you can ignore uh, ignore some parts of grammar but it should be fluent Exactly, yeah. The concept of accuracy is not that important when it comes to speaking, but uh, while uh, in writing you need to be uh, actually accurate, completely accurate, because if you're not accurate, it might cause some misunderstanding. Okay, and uh, let's go on to the next question, question number eight. Uh, How can interacting with pen pals help you improve your English and uh, thin how do you answer this question do you know Um, who a pen pal is oh yeah I know it's like uh, when you write a letter to someone out of the country like a Mm -hmm. foreign country great alright so um, So how is it helpful um, the first thing is that when you talk to when you write to your pen pals you kind of also immerse in their culture, in the culture. So you kind of, you like, especially if that's a English speaking country, then you can actually get a lot of um, the way they talk in the language they use. Um, and also interacting with temples can help you um, not only to connect with that culture, but to also make friends with them. And so making friends with international with international ones um, can be very useful, uh, can be very good, and um, it would um, also make, again, a good pleasure, a good happy for English. Um, and also, writing for pen pals, when you have, like, a, when you establish good connections already, 
good relationship. Uh, this is one of the ways to immersing to immerse yourself in English and actually uh, maximize your exposure to uh, the language. And uh, the last question, because we don't have much time. And uh, how do you question number nine? Why should you practice English and be in touch with it every day? Well, of course, because uh, you want to get better in English. So without practicing it, you won't be get you won't get better. So it is very important to surround yourself. No, no, that is different uh, from surrounding yourself. Uh, the key word or term here is regularity, every day. For example, you can practice English uh, every day uh, for, for an entire week, every day for at least 10 hours, but there is a time gap and you forget about that. You lose your contact with English for, uh, and for one week. So you just... Uh, get immersed in English one one week uh, and the other week actually you forget about that this maybe, is not practicing English every day okay maybe because it's not our native language and it is very important because uh, so, uh, we tend to forget uh, our vocabulary and stuff like this over time because it's not our native language so it is very important to keep practicing uh, daily on daily basis regularity is one of the key uh, terms here and that should be taken into account when it comes to practicing uh, a second or foreign language you know because our brain needs to be accustomed to that language system and if you just practice English intermittently or periodically it's not going to be really useful you need to, as a matter of fact, if I'm asked, I would say that it's better to practice English at least two hours every day in comparison to, for example, practicing it 10 hours one day and, for example, two days nothing. 